The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 26th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. I hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877 927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can let those fingers do the walking, which means go ahead and send me an email. Send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a bit of a mixed bag out there. The Dow and the S&P are trading a bit lower, 80 points and two. Then you've got the NASDAQ 100 Russell trading the upside, 55 and four. Semis are down nine points. Trendy's off about eight points. New York Stock Exchange is on 68. Gold is off four bucks. Silver's off three cents. Slice recruit back a buck 28. Natural gas off 12 cents. She's printing out at $6.70. 30 Treasury trading out at 130.07. That is back to tick. So let's begin by, uh, well, we've seen our first move our first rally move out here why did price stop where it did excellent question the answer to that question will be revealed to us momentarily when we switch over to our take a look at our 30 minute equity future charts out here so in the upper left hand corner you got the es mini upper right you've got the nq lower left you've got the dow lower right you've got the russell 2000 if you take a look at the nq upper right you will see that the rally, now this formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. It did that at about uh, 3.30 in the afternoon. That was on Friday. What that has led to was this morning, as we got into the uh, 10.30 time frame, what price did was it ran right into the sellers where price had recently broken down. And that's at the price point of 11.534.75. Now, we also have a green oscillator and change line that is likely to be targeted. That's around the 11,388-ish area. It'll change a little bit lower. If price can hold that level and then take out 11,534, there's one more area. Well, there's a couple more areas of resistance. There are going to be a lot of areas of resistance on further moves higher. The next level of resistance for the NQ would be up at the 11,585 area. So you're going to watch that. Now, to the downside, you're watching the lows of uh, last Friday because that would negate that Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Now, there's additional support. 11.322 is the we, is the uh, current 30-minute profile. Price closed below that. That would signal move back to those lows on Friday, those lows being at the 11.229 area. If you look at the Russell 2000, did the exact same thing as the NQ. Ran right into resistance at 17.05. Again, we use the body of the candle as the essence of price, not necessarily the wicks or the shadows out there. So that is its key level, 17.05. The Russell doing the same thing as the NQ. Now, it does not have a green oscillator and change line, whereas the uh, Russell, two, uh, sorry about that. I don't know how to avoid these pop-ups there. Um, just really too bad. Uh, it keeps showing up. Terrible. Um, so support for the Russell is either about where it's at right now. It's also going to change. It's just a tad below here. It's at the 1681 level. And below that will be 1670 1650 is the real key area. If you take a look at the Dow, the Dow never made it up to its breakdown level. So should there be a rally, what the Dow would do 
it should find resistance at about 29,880, much like the NQ did, much like the Russell 2000. That's the number to be watching inside of the uh, Dow. For the ES Mini, also did not make its way up to the TD9 count. Well, all four of these, by the way, had those nice uh, Rosemontum indicator bottom patterns that are out there. In the, in the case of the ES Mini, its resistance level is going to be 37.35 and a quarter. It probably able to close above that, then it's got resistance at 37.64.50 uh, out there, and above that, I'm not so sure just yet. Uh, but so that's so. Why did price stop where it did on this rally? It's because price got right up to the breakdown levels that were established by these 30-minute charts. Those were established by the TD9 count pattern. See, the count pattern is something we're certainly going to, well, we talk about it every day. Today, perhaps even more so than other days. Why is that, Steve? Oh, well, this was what's going on under 30-minute time frame charts. And if we take a look at the daily time frame charts here, we'll switch over to that screen here in a moment. Screens, there we go. And so now you're going to have the same thing. you got the ES in the upper left, the NQ upper right, Dow lower left, Russell 2000 lower right. Take a look at the number of nine counts out there. So today we'll complete a TD nine count bottom for the ES mini the NQ, and the Dow Equity Future Contract. Now, what should take place from here is we should see a rally. The first target, because price is below the bottom of their daily profiles, the first level of resistance to the upside is the oscillator and change line. Now, those levels are going to uh, change as price moves up and down. Currently, for the ES Mini, that level is at about 38.42. For the NQ, about 11.804. For the uh, Dow, it's about 35.22. And for the Russell 2000, which will come firm a TD9 count bottom today, it will not complete its bottom pattern until tomorrow. That does not mean that the low is not in. It just means that the pattern itself, the full pattern, will not complete till tomorrow. But it did make a low on Friday with bar number eight. As long as today's price does not close below the close of bar number five, bar number five out here is at 1843.20, and that's not a likely outcome. You will get a TD9 count bottom. The question is, do we make a lower low tomorrow? We could make lower lows today inside the NQ, the ES, and the Dow. It does not negate the TD9 count. It just is establishes that lower threshold level, which right now happens to be Friday's lows, but those could change. So you've got TD9 count bottoms for really all four of the equity future contracts. That's why it's important to see if we've been, we begin to start forming higher highs and higher lows out here. And that is a possibility. Again, if you go back and take a quick peek at those 30-minute time frame charts, you'll see that that is potential. But the only potential is going to turn into something more than potential when those TD9 count breakdown resistance levels at 11,534.75 for the NQ and 1705 for the Russell 2000 fail, as well as 29,880 for the Dow and uh, at least 3735 and a quarter. But we can see here, you can see slightly here. So if you go back to Friday's low, we made a slightly higher low. That took place at about 2.30 in the morning. It took place again at about 6.30 in the morning. Out here, we're starting to see slightly, slightly, just very slightly higher highs. Again, we're just looking at a 30-minute time frame chart. The next question that somebody should ask, and I guess Stevie will ask it because uh, I don't know the answer to it, is uh, where are we at with regard to the 30-minute TAS market profile market breadth out there? And I'm going to try to get this. I was not logged in. I'm logging in right now. We've got a few seconds before we go to a break out here. But I believe, what screen are we on? We're, oh, we're showing that right now. Perfect. So this is for the S&P 500. And it has negative market breadth. So that's not helpful. Let's take a look at the NQ out here. The NASDAQ 100. See what it is telling us. Moment. And two has negative market breadth. So uh, definitely not out of any woods. We'll be right back. Steve Roach, the TFN. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 Mining District. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So a bit of a mixed bag out there. You still have the uh, NASDAQ and Russell 2000. Russell 2000, just slightly higher, 29 cents. The uh, NASDAQ, uh, 35 uh, points to the upside. So we're back still here looking at the uh, at the 30-minute uh, uh, equity futures charts. We'll see that the ES Mini, uh, really all the instruments were making a high as we came into about the 1030 time frame. So now back to the other chart that we're looking at, which is a 30-minute. This is called the Edge product. This is from the uh, folks at Taz Market Profiles. This takes a look at the 30-minute uh, instruments for the uh, S, those that uh, make up the S&P 500 and for the NASDAQ 100 out there. And what we're looking for are bullish or bearish crossovers. We're looking to see how many instruments are trading above the top of a profile versus trading below. Right now, for a 30-minute time frame on the NDX 100, what we know is there's 20 instruments trading above the top of the profile. That's considered, we'll call it bullish out there, and trading 65 instruments trading below the bottom of the profile. Now, as the market was rallying this morning, this is as we came into the open, right at the 9.35 out there, there was a bullish crossover. Um, th that's where the green line crossed the red line out there. And that lasted until we got to about 10.45 this morning. That uh, We got a bearish crossover at about uh, 1045 exactly out there. And we just looked at the ES Mini and it was making its higher in that 1030, 1045 time frame. So very helpful to have this uh, market breath. So, um, but right now it is still negative out there. That's both for the NQ, uh, the S&P 500, its market breath reads like this. And that is that there are, wow, 44 instruments trade above the top of a 30 minute profile 312 trading below the bottom of a profile. Now, uh, we were looking at, so it was the NQ that I was looking at. The, the ES Mini or the S&P had a bullish crossover at, uh, yeah, at 945 this morning. And that bullish crossover went to a bearish crossover that was at uh, it was at 1040 this morning when it went to a, a bearish crossover. So this market breadth is very helpful right now as we speak at 1120 in the morning. We still have intraday negative uh, market breadth uh, for the shortest time frame that Stevie can track out there. OK, does that change anything? Well, let's go take a look at uh, we looked at the four equity future contracts out here. There, are, By the way, there are no questions that I have either inside the Tiger's Den 
or uh, by email. Uh, but if you do have some questions, I would love to field uh, them. In the meantime, what we're going to do here is we'll change screens. Now, again, this is the four equity future contracts for their daily time frame. But if we switch over and we take a look at the uh, core U.S. cash indices out here, and that's what pops up on our screen right now, you will see, beginning in the upper left, that's the uh, Dow TD9 count that will complete today. It should send price up towards its oscillator and change line. That's at the 30,426 area. If you look at the S&P 500, TD 9 count pattern will complete today. Price should target the 3824 level. The NDX 100 also will complete a TD 9 count bottom today. Price target 11730-ish, the Russell 2000. So whereas the equity future contract did not have a confirmed a, a confirmed TD 9, a bar number 9, that will take place today. The cash indice says, hey, I don't know what they're doing over there. But I've got a completed TD9 count pattern that will take place today, and that should send price up to the 1767 area. The semiconductor index does not have a TD9 count bottom. Instead, what it needs is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern. And I would say that in order for the equity markets to rally, uh, this is the one instrument that would then give the signal that the markets are ready to do that. If that does not unfold, then it makes these TD9 counts uh, somewhat suspect. Why does Stevie say that? Well, if I look at the transports out here, so each of these are cash indices, well, with the exception of the composite and the New York Stock Exchange that we can actually trade by ETFs and so forth. If we take a look at the Dow Jones transportation, it generated a bullish hammer candle on Friday. Yeah, it did. And that uh, uh, was uh, also a confirmation or reconfirmation of the T9 count bottom it uh, completed out here on September 7th. So it has a bottoming signal. That hammer candle also completed a buy the D point pattern out there. Uh, so the transports at this stage here have confirmed a bottom. They would negate their bottom with a close below 13,392.67. Next, uh, the NASDAQ Composite, TD9 count. Price should move up to the 11,305 level. New York Stock Exchange, TD9 count. Should take price up to 14,330. So now we will move from here, the uh, primary equity, uh, the primary cash indices out there. We just finished taking a look at the New York Stock Exchange, but we're going to take a look at it a little bit further by changing screens. We're going to take a look at that advanced decline oscillator reading, which on Friday closed at the lowest level that we have seen in quite some time. Why is the quite some time? Well, it takes us back to the March 2020 levels out here. So let's go ahead. Let's expand this out. Give me a moment here. Just expand this. Make it a little bit easier for you and I to take a look at. The top portion of this screen is the New York Stock Exchange. Now, what we're looking for is right down here, the lowest reading that we got during the 2020, during the 2020 lows out there, the lowest advanced client oscillator reading came on uh, March the 12th, minus 392. That was telling us that there should be some type of bounce or rally that forms. Now, what price did then was price, it did have a bit of a rally, but then price continued to move lower, but the advanced client oscillator was making higher lows out there. That was a kind of divergence pattern that led to uh, one heck of a uh, rally, as we know, and that was that rally began on March 23rd, 2020. So as we take a look at where we're at today, or where we were at on Friday, today or Friday, doesn't matter, Friday we're down at minus 356.70. Again, we're in the extreme oversold condition. The question is, does a bottom get formed, similar to back in the 2020 timeframe, where we see price continue to move lower, but the advanced decline oscillator starts to move higher? I don't know the answer to that question. I'm, 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 my current thinking is, that uh, no, that that does not need to happen this time around. Why is that? Well, it's a great question. The why comes down to this. If you give me a moment, we'll get to those set of charts out here. So remember, the date that the uh, so we had the lowest advanced decline oscillator reading. And that was around March the 18th, I believe. March no, March the 12th, March the third, March the 13th, 12th or 13th out there. Okay, so we had that. What else did we have that take that took place? Remember, we were taking a look at those TD9 counts. We looked at them all, the cash indices, the equity future contract. Do they mean anything? Well, if we take a look at what actually transpired on Friday, out of um, five to 6,000 instruments, I don't remember the number off the top of my head. My apology there. I'd have to, I'd have to look it up. But uh, if you take a look at a number of uh, individual stocks that were scanned, 1,426 of them uh, have TD9 counts. Now, I'm just looking at the nine counts. 
you could have been a completed pattern where the low was made on the bar following bar number nine. Those would be added to this. But just to be consistent here, we're just looking at those instruments that actually made bar number nine. Well, the last time we had this kind of a reading was back at the March 2020 lows. It actually took place on the trading day of, why can't I see the day? Oh, there we go. March the 19th. And remember, was it March 23rd was the actual low inside of the, uh, no, it was March, yeah, so it was just a few days later. So what this is telling us right now is that we should see, and all of these uh, red little dots out there in the uh, charts are representing these spikes that we have inside of how many TD9 count bottoms are formed inside of instruments out there. What I can share with you is about 30% of the instruments, maybe 33% of the instruments that had TD9 count bottoms back at the uh, March 2020 lows. On Friday, it was about 25% of the instruments scanned up there. So we should see some kind of bottom in the next couple of days. Maybe all those TD9 count bottoms we're looking at are telling us that right now. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Got the Dow down 19, S&P's up 5, um, Composite's up 4. Otherwise, all the other U.S. cities are trading the downside. Gold down about 9 bucks as we speak right now. Let's go to our first and the only question that we have at the moment. And this is coming in from Dan F. Dan writes in, he says, uh, Steve, I got into RIG. Uh, ticker symbol there is R-I-G. Let me make sure what screen. Okay, we've got the black background screens up. Got in RIG today due to a uh, the TD9 count bottom. What is the probability of a reversal to the upside, Dan, in New York City? Well, first, I'm going to switch charts here. And, Dan, I just want to make sure that uh, your charts are in line with my charts or vice versa out there. And the TD9 count bottom will not be confirmed until – will not 
will not be confirmed until today. Friday was bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to, because rig would have to close above today to negate this signal or pattern out here. Rig would have to close above uh, two dollars and seventy-three cents or two thirty-six. So, yes, you're going to get a TD9 count bottom, but today's only bar number nine. And that blow can form on the bar following bar number nine. So we really, you know, we're, we're lacking that information out there. So I want to make sure that from a counting standpoint, and if you take a look at uh, my chart out here, so hopefully you're watching us, um, on, at least on Tiger TV, if not inside the Tiger's Den, you'll be able to go back and take a look at your charts and make sure that they uh, tie out to each other. Now, let's go back. And, and your question was, what's the probability of a reversal to the upside? So first, I got to really wait for the pattern to, to truly complete out here. But let's go take a look at the black background charts, only because you and I can take a look at what took place on Friday. And if we take a look at the weekly chart first here, the weekly chart, that's the center chart that I'm on. You'll see that the week of uh, July 11th, that began July 11th, there was uh, 128 million shares that traded. Price is testing that level. It never got back to the bottom, but it's doing it with 167 million shares. So 167 versus 127. Price is moving lower with volume. That typically says that price should go at least test that low. That low is $2.32, you're $2.35 right now. So should be able to take place pretty easily. If we move over, Dan, and look at the daily time frame, nice little hammer candle that formed uh, back here on the trading day of July 15th. The volume there was 27 million shares. Well, on Friday, price had gapped down with 35 million shares, never got down to 232. So I would expect and anticipate as long as price stays with inside that uh, candle, and I'll give you the top of that candle, that's the swing point that we're taking a look at. Again, that's a nice hammer candle. And that hammer low is 232. The hammer high is 254. Price needs to close above above 254, below 232, to really give you some kind of feel for what its intent really is out here. Now, you got lighter volume today, 13 million shares in the first two hours of trading out there. So you're much lighter than what we uh, saw on Friday, which, had, well, much lighter. No, Stevie, that's not much lighter. That's approximately the same kind of volume that we're looking out there. And remember that swing point, that hammer candle swing here, Dan, only has 27 million shares. So to answer your question, what is the possibility of reverse, a reversal to the upside? I'd say it gets better if you get a test and rejection of that 232 low out there with lighter volume out there. Then that would give you a better signal. So you've got a TD9 count pattern that's forming. It might not be till tomorrow that you get that low, which would be the bar following bar number nine. And I think you also want to see how price deals with that 232 level because it has been moving down with volume into that area out there. And I think that's where you'll get the most amount of information released to you. So, Dan, thanks so much for writing in. And uh, have a uh, magnificent Monday out there. No other questions as we speak, so we probably should go take a look at some. Of, well, I take that back. There's something inside the Tigers down there. Steve, what do you think about the uh, Forex moves? I think some fun got hurt and we'll need to sell. Well, now, that I don't know. I mean, the Forex moves have been pretty interesting out there. Rossi, is there a specific Forex uh, pair? that you are uh, interested in. You know, the common ones obviously being the pound, the yen, and the euro out there. Um, let's do this here. Let me, uh, let me go to my year, uh, pound charts out here. That's what we really should take a look at. So I think I've got trading, Great British Pound. There we go. So we'll switch screens here. We'll pull up the uh, pound charts because really, you know, the interpret what we want to do is really interpret the market. What are the charts telling us? What's the charts telling us about the great British pound? We all know that it hit a, uh, you know, 30, 35 year low or something that like that earlier in the day. But what are the patterns? So it's populating right now. Uh, as soon as it pop. Well, I'll go over and we'll take a look at those charts. So we're just waiting for these charts here to populate. And here we've got the big picture and some smaller picture. Smallest picture is a 30-minute time frame. So let's take a look at the monthly chart out here. Let's uh, open this up, pull this back, see what we see out here. What we see is Stevie's got to add more data to it. So this will take just a, a moment. Uh, so it's only got 5,400 days. We probably should put in 20,000 days. Oh, man, what's going on with my keyboard here? Well, not 200,000 days, but we'll go with 20,000 days. Now it's going to take a moment here to populate. Uh, that wasn't even uh, that wasn't even good enough. So what we can see out here with regard to the Great British Pound, we can certainly see a very large A to B equals CD pattern on the monthly time frame. So let's just draw that in. We'll draw an A to B. 
we'll just simply go ahead and we'll copy that and then we'll move that to the uh, C point out here. That's as soon as I can, as soon as my system will let me do this. Control C, Control V. There we go. So now we take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern of the uh, Great British Pound. Again, we're looking at a monthly time frame chart out here. Sorry. It's about right there. So the one-to-one -one level, just so just from the bigger picture, that would get us down to about the uh, 95 cent level. And right now we're at a buck eight. This morning we got down to a low of inside the uh, pound of uh, 1.03. But you can see the A to B equals CD pattern that is in place out here for a monthly time frame chart for the Great British Pound. Let's go take a look at the weekly charts. What's the weekly chart tell us? Well, the weekly chart certainly has an A to B equals CD to the downside. If you did generate a bullish reversal candle this week, that means Friday, then you could have a buy the D point pattern. Otherwise, you're at bar number seven of a TD9 count. A TD9 count could not begin to uh, take place until next week. So it'd be between next week and then two weeks after that. So at this stage here, the uh, weekly chart for the Great British Pound is threatening or suggesting lower price. Where the uh, daily chart says, well, hold on a minute here, Stevie. Today looks like it will become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Therefore, this could have formed a TD9 count bottom this morning. And uh, what it could, uh, now we won't get confirmation of that, much like in rig. We won't get confirmation of that until at least tomorrow. And then you need that following day to finally complete the entire pattern out here. Now, let's assume that it's a TD9 count on the daily time frame out here. What price should do, Rossi, is it should move up to its oscillator and change line. That's currently at about the buck 11. So the daily for the Great British Pound is telling us we could or should see some type of bottom form between today and Wednesday out there. On a intraday basis, what I see that sticks out to me the most is the 60-minute time frame. And why that sticks out to me the most is because this has completed a TD9 count top. And uh, and now the question is, the price is trading with inside its profile. Does price pull back to its oscillator and change line, which it should, and then the bottom of its profile, both are at about the 10679 level. Now, this formed a TD9 count top. Well, the 30-minute time frame chart, much like we took a look at for the ES and the NQ, uh, early, or the uh, NQ and the Dow, uh, Russell 2000 earlier, the 30-minute time frame, the rally ended where? Right at TD9 count breakdown resistance. Well, in the case of the Great British Pound, that is the exact same thing. And that was at 1.0887. So to the upside, if price can take out that level, really needs to take out the TD9 count pattern from the 60-minute time frame, and that level is at 1.0931. What I would say to you, Rossi, is if price takes that out, we see a further rally. So while a great hoopla with regard to the pound doing what it did this morning and longer term price is going to head lower or should head lower the daily time frame says hey maybe not so fast maybe prepare for a counter trend move rossi i hope that helps you out with regard to great british pound steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So we took a look at the pound there. Uh, that was uh, from a previous request. We've also got a request here in the Tiger's Den uh, from Peter, who wants to take a look at some other currencies. So we'll take a look at the euro and the uh, Japanese yen. So whereas the uh, pound on a daily time frame is uh, clearly forming a TD9 count bottom, if we take a look at the daily time frame for the euro, we do not have that same kind of pattern. The pattern that is present is a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. It needs a bullish reversal candle in order to confirm a rally attempt. That would take us up towards that oscillator and change line in the 98 cent-ish area. We're trading at 96.42 as we speak right now. So that's the daily time frame. Don't have the same patterns that we are looking at inside the pound. On a weekly basis, the euro is forming bar number seven. I think that was similar to what we looked at in the pound out there. That says you couldn't get a TD9 count bottom here that, to form until between next week and two weeks thereafter. The monthly chart for the euro looks uh, basically tells the message. Price has broken through a consolidation pattern. Let's expand out this chart. I'm just showing you the bottom of the consolidation. That gives us a measured move. And that measured move takes us back to the 2000 uh, lows out here. So it looks like what the euro is doing is headed for that 0.8229 area over time out there. So that's what its daily, weekly, and monthly charts are communicating to us. From an intraday standpoint, if I get this thing to close down for me, what do we see out here? 240 had a, uh, nope, 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 nope. No, I don't see any kind of a bottom signal per se. I really have to study the chart more time that we're giving it right now. But nothing sticks out to me as we speak. Let's go uh, take a look at the uh, yen, see what the yen is doing out here. So as we take a look at it, for its daily time frame, this has a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It also has a TD9 count top. But price right now is taking on its weakening. It's taking on its green oscillator and change line. And if it can close above 144.33, Peter, this would suggest a run for that TD9 count top, that high from the trading day of September 22nd at 145.90. If you look at the uh, monthly time frame chart, its TD9 count top was negated several months ago. This suggests higher price. The weekly price above its green oscillator and change line. It does have a rose momentum indicator signal that needs a bearish reversal candle. So this chart here remains bullish, cautiously bullish. It's just bullish on the monthly time frame. And it is a sort of a neutral signal right now because price is just slightly above that green asset and change line when it comes to the daily time frame. So that's what's going on, Peter. Uh, we take a look at the uh, currency pairs out there. I hope that that uh, helps you out. Um, and uh, for the dollar, I'll just switch back. We could take a look at the larger time frame chart here for the dollar. We'll go to the black background screen. You'll see the larger A to B equals CD patterns. Not just yet. I've got to get over to that tab. But uh, here we'll take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Here we go. 
you'll see uh, well you won't see it on the daily time frame but you do see it on the weekly the monthly and the uh, quarterly time frames well you'll actually just see it on the monthly and the quarterly time frame so the next price projection level for the US dollar from its A to B equals CD standpoint is up at the 116.54 level 116.43 to 116.54 and uh, my recollection is the dollar does not have any kind of topping signals other than much like the euro I roads meant to mitigator top signal not any kind of confirmed pattern what the US dollar would need is a bearish reversal candle to confirm that pattern much like the euro would need a bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern as well so no other requests as we speak just yet uh, let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks that started trading uh, lower out there well it's been trading lower but let's go take a look at its signal see if we can find anything we begin by take a look at the daily time frame what you'll see is today is the bar following bar number nine so this should get us a pretty good read on what gold's intent is. What I mean by that specifically is that if uh, gold closes below the low of today, whatever that low is, at the present time, today's low is 1633.80. If tomorrow or the next day or the day after that, price closes below that level, that whatever the low of today is, we might see a lower low than what we have. But if price does close below that, then this bottom pattern will have negated itself. It will tell us about a strong momentum move to the downside. It will tell us to expect lower price. Now, I know somebody might say lower price to where. So that's also a great question. The lower price to where is, uh, we, we'll flip back and forth here. Let's go take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns that are underway here inside of a Goldilocks. And for that, I switch back to the black background chart. Now, there's a couple different patterns out here. Uh, the, the, the more dangerous pattern comes from the weekly chart. And the more dangerous pattern, when I say that, is because this had a consolidation. Now, let's do this. I, th I think this thing has shifted a bit. Let me just move this a tad, probably right to about there, yeah, right, yeah, right about here. So what I want to do is, this would be the very bearish case here for gold. And that is that it's when you break through a consolidation pattern, which clearly gold has done, then what that does, that generates a measured move. The measured move in gold would take us all the way back to the lows from uh, July of, or August of 2018. And that's down around the 1311 area. So that's the longer term message of a consolidation breakdown inside of a gold for its weekly time frame charts. However, there is support or potential support. And that next support for Goldilocks is at the 1603.90 level. Now, remember, when we started this portion of the segment, it was the mere fact that gold on a daily basis will complete a TD9 count pattern today. Today is, bar, is the bar following bar number nine. The current low is 1633.80. If for our purposes that low holds and price gets below that, then the next area of support would be at 1603.90. If price closed below 1603.90, the next level of support would go to the quarterly time frame, and that would be at the 1542 to 1467 area out there. So what does that tell us about gold? Well, if we go back to the other intraday time frame charts out here, which we're going to do here, we've already covered the daily. Now let's look at the other intraday charts. What do we have? Well, on a five-hour time frame chart, you have a confirmed Rosemont to indicator bottom. All the price did was it got right up to the oscillator and change line, which is red and turned down. That's kind of a bearish message. But you still have the uh, confirmed bottom. And that says that the uh, low, which in uh, gold, it would be at 1633.80. So the same low that we're dealing with out here. Um, if uh, price uh, closes below that, well, then this pattern, its Rhodes momentum indicator signal will have failed. The four-hour time frame chart also has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal. So again, if that 1633 level fails, that tells us about lower price. You've got a TD9 count bottom on the 120-minute time frame chart. Price finding resistance at the top of its profile, 1654.90. So we know that is a key area of resistance. So you've got the oscillator and change line on the five-hour. You've got the 1654.90 level on the uh, two-hour chart. The other intraday charts, nothing that I have here for the 60-minute that stands out. The 30-minute Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, as does the 15, as does the 10-minute charts out there. So from an intraday standpoint, now switching to the 10 and the 15-minute chart, uh, we don't see any kind of a bottom signal just yet. So uh, price may, in fact, continue to move lower out here. Don't have a bottom signal on the 15-minute chart. The 30-minute chart out here, price is testing support. So the support level for gold for a 30-minute time frame is at uh, 1643.10. We're at 1150. If price closed below 1643.10 as we come to the noon time frame, that's suggesting a retest of those overnight lows out there in the case of Goldilocks. 
Real quickly, before we uh, head to uh, break out here, we've got about 15 seconds or so. Oh, I can't do it. Well, I'm going to try to put it up here. There was a question to take. We did cover the NQ uh, in, uh, in uh, detail out here, but uh, we're going to be going into our last segment, and we're going to come back to it. We'll come back and take a look at the uh, TAS market breadth, which I'm sure is still negative out there. But no other questions that we have inside the queue. So we'll finish off taking a look at the NQ when we get back to the spring. Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So let's uh, finish off the uh, show. Uh, take a look at the uh, NQ out here. Uh, that didn't work real well on my other system. Let's see, 22. And uh, so we begin by taking a look at the uh, TAS market uh, breadth out here. So we take a look at the TAS market breadth for the NQ. Still remains very bearish. What I mean by that is there right now are 55 NQ instruments, NASDAQ 100 instruments, trading below the bottom of their 30-minute profile and only seven trading above. So any rally that uh, takes place uh, at, while this condition is in place, there's going to be lots of selling, a lot of uh, choppiness out there. In order for or, and, and if, and choppiness or, or really uh, no problem with regard to sellers exerting control, the question is, uh, is there any level of support to be watching inside the NQ? Well, for the 30-minute time frame, we know that it formed. I'll just simply expand this chart out again. For the 30-minute time frame, what we know 
is that this formed on Friday, a nice Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pulls back a bit. So it does that, right? You got this. You got the signals being uh, generated out here. There was a TD9 count bottom, a, TD, a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom that uh, formed out here at uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That failed by 2.30. There was another one that confirmed here as we came into the 3.30 time frame. That one has held. And what that did was that took price right up to its TD9 count breakdown resistance level, 11.534.75. Now, price is pulling back, but we still have a higher low out here. So the question is, we're below support, and support is the uh, bottom of its profile. The bottom of its uh, current profile is at 11,414 out there. So we did get price closed below that. So now the question is, you know, what's the retracement? What's the retracement really off of the low from 230? Well, I can't really do retracements that easily on the white background chart, so we'll switch over and take a look at the black background charts. We can do that much easier, although I need to clean this up just a uh, tad out here. Let's get rid of that stuff if I can. Okay, and now let's go take a look at our retracement tool. And on our retracement tool, if we go just simply from the lows from Friday up to the highs of uh, today, this morning out here, uh, what we can see is prices made the 0.618 retracement, or, or very close to it, 11,344. So here's the deal, folks. We've got TD9 counts all over the place. This suggests that we should see a bottom in the market. That's uh, forms between today and I would say Wednesday at the uh, latest out here. But if price could take out, that's the NQ, 11. 534.75, that will tell us that the bottoming process or the bounce process, the counter trend rally process has begun. Folks, have a magical Monday. I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday.